Garage. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Gray's Garage. And today I'm presenting from my own personal garage because the lab was busy. Now today, I have a really great episode for you. I'm finally giving the Honda guys what they want, and that is a flow visualization for a Honda car. Now, I didn't choose the S2000 first. I chose something a little bit more accessible in the tuner world, and that is a Civic hatchback. So I'm not a Honda guy, so please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe it's a fifth generation Civic hatchback, an EG or EH chassis, I believe. And I chose this car for a number of different reasons, um, but the big one was um, I chose the SIR2 model. Now, I, I don't think this car was sold in North America, maybe only in Japan or in Europe, maybe. Um, but the reason why I chose this one in particular is, well, one, I haven't done a hatchback yet. Two, uh, Honda guys love to you know, add body kits and stuff, so this was gonna be very useful for them. And three, the SIR models came with a number of different rear spoilers. So I got some pictures here of the model, and actually a couple pictures of different SIR2 hatchback models. And you can see the model that I chose has a smooth upper rear spoiler. And then it also has a second spoiler that's at the base of the windshield, and it just sticks right out. And I was wondering if this is just aesthetics or if it actually does something. Um, and so stay tuned, I actually looked at the clean car, top spoiler, and then both spoilers, and it actually quite drastically affects the flow at the, at the rear of the car. Um, but the other ones, the other models here come with more aggressive, you know, almost wing-like spoilers at the back. And so this car really has some options coming out of the factory on aero uh, adaptations. And so I really wanted to look at this. And again, the hatchback has a different sort of style at the, at the rear end. Um, so stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy. Let's go look at the flow visualizations. We begin by looking at the clean geometry that's with no rear spoilers. And this is at low speed with a pulsed hydrogen bubble sheet. The flow is moving from the left to the right and we can see that it moves smoothly over the front uh, bonnet, the windscreen, and the top roof. We can see that we have a stagnation point near the center of the front bumper and where things get interesting is at the rear of the vehicle, where along the rear windshield we get some separation and some recirculation and turbulence, and the flow is directed downwards into the wake. And so we're going to be focusing at the rear here and see how the spoilers affect the flow. Let's now look at it at high speed. So we are now looking at the clean geometry at high speed. And we can see this because the bubbles are moving so quickly that they blur in the camera. And again, as before, we see that the flow moves smoothly over the front bonnet, windscreen, and the top of the car. And again, we can see something interesting is happening along the rear windshield, uh, where we do see some bubbles turbulent, moving turbulently uh, along the windscreen, and you can see how the flow leaves the shape of the car at the rear and still moves downward into the wake, but doesn't follow the contour lines of the vehicle itself. So now we're going to turn on the bubbles on the surface at the rear and see what the flow structure looks like. So now we have both the upstream bubbles as well as the bubbles on the surface helping us visualize the flow structure. And as we can see there is a wake behind the vehicle of slower moving bubbles. And we can tell that they're moving more slowly because we can actually see the individual bubbles and we can see their paths. Whereas the high speed flow, that's the flow around the vehicle, is blurred because it's moving so quickly. So again we can see that there is some turbulence along the rear windscreen and we do get some uh, recirculation bubbles at the rear bumper and rear lights. Uh, the exact orientation and geometry of these bubbles is a little bit difficult to make out so what we're going to do is turn off the bubbles upstream and see if it becomes more clear. So here we have only the bubbles in the surface being produced. And it makes it a little bit more clear on the sort of flow structure and geometry of what's happening. And it appears that the bubbles in this slower moving wake are being pulled down quite strongly. And this is likely due to two longitudinal vortices being produced at the edges of the, of the vehicle. And this is due to the slant angle of the back windshield. And this is producing something called a downwash, which is pushing the flow downwards. And we can really see it moving back behind the bumper and the rear lights. The flow is being angled down. 
and the recirculation bubbles seem to be very small and trapped very close to the vehicle. Let's zoom in now and see if we can get a better look. So now we are zoomed into the clean geometry, and as I said before, we do have um, a lot of downwash in this geometry, and that's pulling these bubbles down toward the ground. Again, these this downwash is likely due to something called longitudinal vortices, and I have the schematic here, and this is inducing a downwash, which is pushing those bubbles down, and we can see that our recirculation bubbles are very small, and they're located very close to the vehicle, and this is likely what's causing most of the drag because this is the low pressure region here, the suction region, which is causing most of the drag for this geometry. The other thing is here, because these bubbles are being pulled down to the ground so strongly, it's gonna be producing a lot of high uh, lift at the rear axle. So let's see now if we can remove this by adding some spoilers at the rear. So we begin by looking at the full uh, zoomed out perspective of the vehicle with only the top spoiler installed. So we can see that uh, the top spoiler is installed and a small bit of tape has been placed so that the uh, transition between the vehicle and the spoiler is smooth. And as before, uh, because it's high speed flow, we get smooth flow around the front of the vehicle over the top. And it looks like the angle of the flow at the rear has changed, so it's not being pulled down as much as before. Uh, but to really see this, we need to turn on the bubbles on the surface at the back, so let's go ahead and do that now. So now we have the bubbles at the rear turned on as well, with the upper spoiler installed. And as you can see, quite clearly, the rear wake structure has changed quite drastically. Uh, we have a larger wake, it extends further into the behind the vehicle, and that angle of the flow around the vehicle at the rear has changed quite significantly. It's not pointing downwards toward the ground as sharply as before. Instead, it's being moved up, and this causes the wake to increase, um, but most likely, it's actually reducing your drag and reducing your lift. And that's because of those, those vortices that were happening before. They produce a strong suction, and as I mentioned before, the recirculation bubbles that we were seeing at the rear bumper and the rear lights were located very close to the vehicle, and these are low pressure regions, which are you know, pulling the vehicle backwards, causing a lot of, bit, a lot of drag. And now it appears that these recirculation regions have moved downstream away from the vehicle, and this likely has reduced the drag, even though I haven't made any drag measurements here, the flow structure indicates that it would be beneficial to the vehicle. Let's go ahead and zoom in and see if we can get a better look. So now that we're zoomed in, um, we can see a little bit more clearly the structure of the flow. Now, because bubbles are being produced on the surface, sometimes they accumulate, and you can see that here, these large bubbles. Uh, but the general structure, you know, as before I mentioned, it has changed quite drastically due to this rear spoiler. Uh, it is increased in size. We can see that the, the effect of the vehicle is more pronounced in the wake, and that that upper angle is less sharply inclined towards the ground. So most likely your rear end uh, lift has decreased quite drastically, and my postulate here is that actually your drag has decreased as well. Uh, generally when you're producing lift, you're also producing drag, and so by reducing that lift, you're reducing the amount of drag. Let's take a look at the flow structures in this wake. Let's turn off the bubbles upstream and see if we can get a clearer picture. So now we're only looking at the bubbles being produced in the wake with the upper spoiler installed. And again, it becomes much clearer that the wake size is increased. Uh, we can see that there's a lower recirculation bubble here located in this general area, and there appears to be an upper bubble um, that's connected to the flow along the rear windshield as well. This upper bubble has a clockwise orientation of rotation, whereas the lower has a counterclockwise orientation of rotation. As you can see, this flow structure is very unsteady. It's changing quite rapidly in time and these structures are shedding into the wake. Let's now add that mid spoiler in addition to the upper spoiler and see how it affects the wake of the car. So you first look at a zoomed out view. Um, this is the car with the upper spoiler as well as the mid spoiler installed. And this is at low speed with a pulsed hydrogen bubble sheet. And nothing really new here as before, it moves smoothly along the front of the car over the top. And in the wake, 
the change in the angle at the rear is very similar to the case with just the upper spoiler installed. We can't really see too much different with that mid spoiler installed. So let's increase the speed and see if this flow structure changes at all. We are now looking at the Civic with the upper and mid spoiler installed at high speed and we have the upper bubbles as well as the bubbles along the surface at the rear being produced. And immediately what we can see is a huge difference is that the hydrogen gas being produced along the back windshield is not being pulled off into the downstream wake as before. It's actually accumulating and collecting into larger and larger bubbles. And that's why we can see these bubbles along the back windshield and they're being pushed and pulled around, but they're not being pulled off the windshield. So now what this tells us is that the flow along the rear windshield is actually trapped in a, re in a closed recirculation bubble. So that's a bubble of recirculating flow that's actually not opening and letting anything out into the downstream wake. Eventually the hydrogen gas being produced along the wire here will create a bubble that's so big that it will have to shed, but for now we can see that it just keeps getting bigger but the bubble is not being pulled downstream. Uh, the rest of the wake looks very similar, it's large as before, but it's really the flow along the back windshield which has changed the most. Let's zoom in and see if we can get a better look. So now we're zoomed in to the flow with the upper and mid spoiler installed. We now have uh, both the upper and the surface bubbles uh, turned on. And as before, we can see that immediately when we turn those surface bubbles on, we start to get accumulation along the rear windshield. The bubbles start getting bigger and bigger and we have this closed recirculation bubble. Now this is due to the conditions um, being imposed by the mid spoiler, that geometry there. Having that mid spoiler is actually creating a closed recirculation bubble, which is not letting the gas escape and move downstream into the flow. Uh, the rest of the flow uh, looks very similar. Um, we do have some separation bubbles uh, along the back surface near the, the rear bumper and the rear taillights. And the size of the, of the wake uh, looks similar to before. But the key thing to take away from this is that because we have this, this closed separation bubble is before when we had the spoiler, uh, we had flow coming from below actually mixing with the flow along the windshield, but here there is no mixing of the flow. So any dirt or dust or debris that was picked up by turbulence along the road is not going to make its way into the flow along the rear windshield, and so you're likely not going to get any dirt deposits along your rear windshield. Um, this is something that's quite interesting with this, this mid-spoiler, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's sort of the reason why they installed it. Now let's take one last look here at this flow and then let's compare all three geometries and make some final conclusions. So right now we're looking at the flow with the upper and mid spoiler and only the bubbles at the surface at the back are being produced. And again immediately we can see this the, the accumulation along the rear windshield due to that closed bubble imposed by the geometry of that mid spoiler. And again the rest of the wake we can see the counterclockwise uh, recirculation bubble being shed downstream at the lower edge of the rear bumper and uh, the rest of the flow is moving downstream into the wake. Uh, so let's go ahead now and compare all three uh, conditions of the geometry. That's clean, upper spoiler, and upper and mid spoiler. And we can make some final conclusions here about each of them. We now compare all three geometries that were investigated. The clean case likely has the highest rear lift and highest drag. Adding the top spoiler increases the wake of the width, but likely decreases the rear end lift and also decreases the drag. However, this wake is very turbulent and mixing, where we have flow from the upper area mixing with the lower and vice versa. When we add the mid spoiler, we separate the flow. So the flow between the upper and mid spoilers along the back windshield is completely enclosed and does not interact with the rest of the wake. Therefore likely you'll have less dirt and soiling of the rear windshield, which may be the reason why this mid spoiler was installed. However, the rear end lift and drag, it's hard to say how it's affected. 
So I hope everyone enjoyed this flow visualization for a fifth generation Honda Civic hatchback. Uh, my next Honda will actually be an Acura and it will be a Integra or Integra, however you say it, um, R model, I believe. So I, was ha I had this sent to me uh, by a viewer and so I've assembled it already. I haven't got to testing yet, but that will be, will be my next Honda project and I'm hoping lots of people will find that useful. Uh, but we did learn some things through this visualization. We learned that the uh, hatchback does have quite a different rear end geometry, flow structures, um, and the spoilers really do affect the, the flow structures in the, at the back. Now, I pulled up some basic information on the drag coefficient for a hatchback Civic, and the numbers are kind of iffy, anywhere between 0.31 and 0.36. So somewhere in that range is generally where these hatchbacks fall. Um, that's not particularly amazing, it's not particularly bad. Um, and that's sort of, sort of, you know, not so great because of the large base area, which creating is creating a large base drag. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Now, uh, I do do these things on my free time, as you can tell I'm in my garage right now. Uh, so please subscribe if you liked it and like this video. And if you want to see something in particular, again, you can email me, go to my website. Um, if you want to send me your own car model to test, I'd be happy to do that. As I said, I've, a viewer sent me his uh, Integra. And uh, stay tuned for more. Chris Garage.